I think right now so many of us are just feeling that intense pull to return to a more simple and natural way of living, of connecting more to our environment and maybe even more importantly finding a space where we can connect more with one another. Today we've traveled to New Mexico where we're meeting an incredibly inspiring young family who have built a very unusual home to raise their cubs. Hey Zach! What's up man? Good to meet you man! Yeah, you too! And wow, what a place you've got here! Yeah man, it's the tent! How did you actually come up with this idea of building a tent here on the property? Uh, we went through a lot of ideas, tent, RV, camper, really any scenario that was just going to get us on the land into something that we could live in. And uh, finally came across what they call like wall tents or canvas tents, kind of similar to a yurt, but it seemed like it was going to be the cheapest option, so we kind of went forward with that idea. Because you're living in here with two young cubs as well, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, we got a one-year-old, almost two, and then a four-year-old, so, yeah. How did that all come about? Because making the decision to move into any small living situation with two kids, that's a big decision to make, yeah, right? totally. That was the reason we did it, really. If it was just me and Katie, I think we probably would have gone some alternate routes, but the idea was to get the kids out, get them outside. That's why we kind of based the whole thing around the fire pit. It was just more family-based living. Basically, we were in California, it's a little bit of a different lifestyle out there than living a little bit more of a country life, but you start watching your kids just be trapped inside and living that suburban lifestyle, and you ask yourself, do you really want this life for your kids? And for us, we were, no, we didn't. So we headed out uh, to New Mexico in hopes of finding a better life, and a couple of years later, we ended up here kind of holding our values and what we wanted out of life. When we first started considering moving back to New Mexico was when I had gotten pregnant with my second son. And all we had in California was a two bedroom apartment that had a four by eight patio. And we started thinking, we're gonna have two boys. This is not a good idea. <laughs> we need space. And uh, so it was a little bit hard to rip the California boy out of California, but this is a much better lifestyle for us with two boys and even though the house is small we have two acres of land basically to use and it's just a really refreshing thing to have with our children. Because already the tent looks beautiful but your Thanks, garden here is next level. Yeah I just took about a hundred pounds of uh, seed and threw them everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Let God do his thing with the rain. <laughs> so you said you built the whole design around the fire. Yeah we originally had brought the camper in and just set it here and then the fire pit we just grabbed some uh, stones from the river and then hauled them in and made a fire pit and literally just built everything around that. <laughs> uh, family life was the reason we moved into this whole setup. It's the reason we built the fire pit outside. The whole idea was being able to just sit down as a family and hang out and put the phone down or get off Instagram, get off Facebook and just get back to the heart of conversation and mm -hmm. hanging out with people and just not being superficial anymore. This is so much of that stuff with culture and I think this was our step of taking that jump and just putting a foot down and saying we're not going to live this kind of life anymore. Yeah. So tell me about the process of building this here on the land. Pretty basic. We just did some decking uh, concrete blocks and then uh, I had my friend help me build the deck out and then we had done the frame. Once we got the frame up, it was really just as simple as sliding the tent over and then just kind of outfitting the inside. Really, really basic. So what's this tent actually made from? Um, we have our canvas tent, pretty heavy canvas. Really helps with keeping in the heat and keeping moisture out. It's also really breathable, so it doesn't really let the humidity stay in. It kind of just pushes it out. We looked into a lot of options for the front of this. The whole idea with the tent was to do it on a budget and not really spend a lot of money. So there's a lot of expensive options you could do for this stuff. We just picked up some polycarbonate sheeting though from Home Depot for real cheap. So this whole front only cost us, I think, like 80 bucks. The tarp on top is just a 30 mil. Same thing, polycarbonate top. That just helps with some heat retention, keeping the rain out. Uh, we have some hail storms that will come through that are pretty intense, but so far haven't had any leaks in there or anything, so it's been good. And so how big is the tent actually? 
Uh, the total square footage, roughly like 304 square feet. Uh, once we open the doors up like we have it here, it opens onto this big deck that we can just hang out on. It really adds on like another 150 square feet to the whole feel of the room. So it's never ever felt like we're living in a 300 square foot home. Well, I can't wait to see what you've done on the inside. Can we check it out? Yeah, let's go on in, man. All right. Dude, this is just so nice. Thanks, man. It feels more like being in a cabin than a tent, right? Yeah, that was the idea, was never to really have it be a tent. The structure was always gonna be a tent, but we really wanted to build it out more like a modern home or cabin feel. And I just love the way that you've styled it in here. Thanks, man. A lot of the wood you'll see in here is all from a Idaho barn that was disassembled and hauled back over to New Mexico. I picked it up from some lady locally and then basically made everything I could out of that. So. That really helped with cost and just really made it a little more of a unique space that matched our style. And I really love the light fittings in here as well. And this is actually your job, isn't it? You actually make these as a business. Yeah, that's what uh, I do. I started making lights and started selling them and people kept buying them. So yeah. <laughs> I guess if you're gonna have lights, you might as well have ones you made in your own home. Absolutely, and they definitely help to make this space something really special. Oh, thank you. And so what are you doing for electricity here? Uh, we have access to mains power right now. We're looking at getting like a little solar setup maybe so it can be a little more off grid with it, but for right now that's worked out. Tell me a little bit about some of the other things in here because I can see lots of these cool rocks scattered around the place. Yeah, I'm kind of a rock hoarder. We'll do a lot of trips to Colorado and there's a lot of mining towns up there and uh, quartz is just an abundant up there. So we'll go up there on trips and find lots of cool little pieces of quartz and if you're lucky, you'll get some gold. I love it. I'm a bit of a rock hound myself, so nice. I'm totally with you on nice. that one. I'm about to go up. <laughs> oh yeah, I'd love that, man. And you're definitely, I can't say you're camping here. This is definitely glamping or a more extreme yeah, version of it. You've got the full television and everything. We got TV, man. <laughs> we got kids. If there's kids, there needs to be a TV. <laughs> I hear that. <laughs> but at least there's a garden to balance it out in this case, yeah. right? Yeah, the TV doesn't come on very often. They're out in the garden during the day. If they're lucky, they'll get some TV at night. And then tell me a little bit about the lounge space here. Same kind of stuff. I made some of the furniture out of the old wood. The walls are just all plywood, so that was really cheap. And then just adding our own style with adding some paint to them, some lines, shelving, just simple design stuff that really makes it pop and not just be plywood anymore. And then the dining table over here? Yeah, same thing, same old wood. It's a real primitive style, but adding some rocks and some lighting fixtures and paintings over it, just make it really have a cool, unique feel to it. It definitely does, and I love the way that the chairs and the table sort of also faces out into the garden. Yeah, once again, everything was just based on the fire pit, so yeah, <laughs> everything points to that. Definitely one of the things that I love about tent living is it just completely breaks down that separation between your home and the natural world. Oh, it really does. I mean, if you can look like right now, just the trees casting shadows on the tops. If it's raining, you know. If it's windy, you know. There's really not much of a separation between you and the outside air, which in the winter time can be a little rough, but it's really something special though. What do you do for heating? Uh, we have a little propane heater. It just really seemed to be an easy option. It was a propane heater. Um, it was movable. We could move it anywhere in the tent that we are at the time. Um, and propane is really cheap in this area, so it really cuts down, once again, on the cost of living. And how does that really work, though? Because one of the things about, obviously, a canvas tent is you don't have any insulation. So is that sufficient to heat the space? It could be better, obviously. We're not in a situation where we're ever going to freeze, that's for sure. Realistically, it worked fine. As long as we had some sweatpants and a sweatshirt on, we were perfectly fine. <laughs> Fair enough, too. <laughs> and then tell me what you've done over here with the kitchen. Yeah, same thing. You'll see all that wood, real primitive countertops putting just a little bit of a heavier finish on these guys so we could do our chopping and food prep on there. We didn't run any plumbing or anything really, just a, a gravity fed sink for this guy. Real basic, you just fill it up and we need water in there to wash out our dishes. Other than that, it's just very, very basic. So what about cooking here? We cook basically all of our meals on the barbecue. Um, we're very into eating burgers and steak and stuff, so we got a barbecue for that. <laughs> Um, we also have this setup right here that lets us cook something if we need um, without firing up the barbecue, but we don't use that too often. Another cool part about with the tent layout was being able to carve out a 4x8 closet. Uh, so we have a nice big walk-in closet so we can store all our clothes and extra stuff, um, any of my extra winter clothes, boots, all that stuff. So we have plenty of space to store that. And you've got the Berkey filter there too. Got the Berkey, man. That thing's a lifesaver. We got plenty of river water, so it's... Uh, 
just a matter of getting the water in there and getting it filtered and we got free water for the rest of our life. Yeah, because you are right on the river here, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, we're about 250 feet, so can't be that. Perfect, <laughs> yeah. So what about the bathroom here? Oh, the bathroom? Right over here, my man. So here's our bathroom. It's a four by eight little square that I carved out into our tent. We got our composting toilet, which has worked out great for the past year. I've been using that, haven't had any issues. The shower, we haven't put one in yet. It hasn't really been an issue for us with showers, just kind of outsourcing for that stuff, but yeah. maybe eventually I'll get one set up in there. So what do you do for showering right now? Um, so right now we're just going over to Katie's mom's house. We're on the same acreage and it's really close. So that's worked out nice for giving the kids baths and stuff like that getting them clean from digging around in the fire pit. But we do have future plans for getting some, probably a solar shower set up in here so we don't have to leave it all if we don't want to. And then what about sleeping arrangements? Cause there's the four of you in here. There's so what are you, how are you doing yeah. that? Uh, so right now we're up in the loft as we like to call it. We got a king size bed up there and uh, our youngest is Grizzly and we bought him a little dog bed. It's memory foam though, so. It's pretty nice. <laughs> Grizzly's actually sleeping in a dog He's bed. In a dog bed. So cool. I gotta check this out. Yeah, let's go see it. Watch your head. This is a really cute space. And that bed actually looks super comfortable. Yeah, it's probably more comfortable than ours. <laughs> now, when you're in a space like this, with no insulation, I mean, I know sleeping lofts and a tiny house just gets so hot. How do you manage the heat up there? Uh, that's been the great part about the tent. If we were in an insulated house, it would be way too hot to sleep up there for sure. But once the sun goes down behind the trees and uh, the tents kind of let off all its heat, it actually gets really cool up there. And so it's really nice. Like even in the summertime, we've always had sheets over us. It's never been an issue of being too hot. So how long have you actually been living here now? Uh, we're coming up on one year, just in a little bit. Total time of uh, about a year and two months with being on the property, but with the tent, we're almost a year in. And can you tell me a little bit about how your life has changed since making that move? Oh, it's been a big process, not only just lifestyle, but our mindset and our thinking and just how we look at finances and just quality of life, really. It's gonna come down to uh, what are we gonna be thankful for in 30 years? Are we gonna be thankful for where we were working nonstop for 40 hours a week, or are we gonna really enjoy the times and memories we had of looking back at all the camping trips we did and just the fun stuff we were able to do with the money we saved because we changed our lifestyle. And talking about that financial aspect of it, what did this actually cost to build? When we moved in, we had spent just about $5,000. So I think we were a little bit under $5,000 for everything. That was including buying a new couch and a toilet that was about $1,000, so. <laughs> wow, this is a really stunning result for five grand. Oh, you thanks, must have man. found some real bargains out there. Oh yeah, we're, we're bargain shoppers for sure. I think just doing the work yourself is really what saves uh, a lot of the money. Like I said, all the wood and all that stuff, if you were to buy it from a store, would cost a ton of money, but being able to source my own wood and make what I could from it just really, really saved us on money. And with your business, you're actually able to work from home as well, aren't you? Yeah, I, so I run my own business and that's allowed me to just to stay home all day, which really helps out. It takes that weight and stress off of my life of having to show up at nine o'clock and get home by six o'clock, you know. And what about Katie, is she in the same boat? Katie worked in a hair salon for a long time and she started doing that when she was here. Um, but she recently quit just so we could build our life a little bit more how we wanted it. It was starting to cut into her having to be at work a lot and we just didn't really like the route that was taking us as a family, so. And how amazing with your family and your two young kids that you get to share this space together and then just actually, you get to be there the whole time as they're growing up. Oh, it's fun. It definitely puts a stress that you wouldn't get if you were gone for eight hours a day, but at the same time, you think how much you miss when you're gone for eight hours a day and that's a huge chunk of the day. So I, yeah, I really get to just experience every every single point of their life and I know I'm not gonna regret that when I get older. Just in terms of your kids upbringing, I mean this is a very very different situation from their life before in California yeah. and obviously they've only been doing this for a year and they're quite young still but have you noticed a difference in how their characters and personalities are developing here? Oh yeah, I always go back to when we were in the apartment and Fox just always wanted to be on the iPad and just seeing him stuck inside this brick and mortar type scenario with surrounded by streets and cars and stuff and just really wanting him to just be able to experience nature in a deeper way. So now I think our focus is really just getting them outside, watching them run around the garden, just putting the iPad or phone down and turning the TV off. Even though we have one, you know, it's, it's not on very much. Really just making the kids get outside and enjoy everything that's out there. Being in the city life, living in the suburbs, I mean, you don't 
if you get a backyard, it's not a very big one. You can have a garden back there, but our idea was just take the land and make it something we really enjoyed. Have our mm -hmm. first garden, and even if we killed everything, who cares? The kids <laughs> got to plant some seeds and watch some stuff grow. Yeah, I just love that they have this chance and this experience to be outside and be in nature, and I would rather see them learning through nature and their interactions with being outdoors and experiencing life outside than being uh, stuck inside playing video games all day or something like that. So I definitely like the idea of them growing up being a little bit more wild and free. I think a home, you gotta define what a home is. A home is really just a place that you need to sleep, that you can house your family and that uh, you can eat in. And we can do all three of those things just as well as we could in our two bedroom apartment or the five bedroom house we were renting. We don't have the burden of a knowing that we owe $400,000 on this house or mm -hmm. worrying about making that $1,600 rent every month. It's just getting back to what is a home and your home is your family. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we kind of built the whole tent premise on. So what do you think the future holds for you now? Uh, no clue, man. <laughs> it's an open book. We've talked about it, but uh, couldn't tell you. And that's exactly the way you want it to be, right? Yeah. Like, the future's a mystery, but what an incredible place yeah. to be enjoying in the prison. Yeah, we're here now, so just enjoy it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for yeah, sharing man. your amazing home with me, yeah, Jack. Thank you, man. One of the things that I really love about living in a tent is just how close you get to be to nature. There's just so little separation between you and the outside world, and yet you still have all of the safety and security that you need. Especially with the two young children here, having all of this access to this wild outdoor playground, I honestly just cannot think of a better place to be raised.